on uh, removing that secondary tax take, sir. Uh, I think I will conclude my uh, contribution at that point, but I'm sure others have more to say. I call the Honourable Clayton Cosgrave. Mr Chairman, um, I, I will say something firstly positive about this bill. Given, as a member of FEC, um, we've dispatched a number of tax bills. In fact, I've almost lost count of how many tax bills uh, the committee has dispatched over the life of this parliament. I will say that this is uh, a better quality bill in terms of how it's put together than we have dealt with in the past. And I recollect, just as a, as a, si a brief sidebar, sir, the Bright Line test, which was a complete shambles of legislation. Uh, I'd never seen a, a tax bill, sir, where every accounting firm in New Zealand, the big five and the rest, came in and said this won't work. And, uh, and I recall other tax bills, sir, that we've dealt with uh, through FEC, the former minister's uh, bill around car parks and computers and all that sort of thing. And I just say in passing, sir, that the thing that has always worried me about these particular bills is that from, from my sort of 17 years or 18 years in this place, having been on FEC a few times, a few of those years, that the advice or the way ministers' offices are dealing with these bills, sir, and some of the quirky, colourful, bizarre and uh, sometimes idiotic ideas that, that emanate from the bowels of the bureaucracy, sir, in the past uh, would never have hit a minister's desk. Would never have hit a minister's desk, or if it had hit a minister's desk, sir, it would have had a lot of robust uh, thinking and policy work around it. And I mean no disrespect as such, particularly to the IRD, but when you lose people like uh, the, the former Deputy Commissioner of uh, Inland Revenue, Robin Oliver, who I had the pleasure uh, to, uh, to submit when I was Chair of FEC, sir, you, the advice that one received around these, these bills, the process and the quality of the legislation, sir, was extremely high. But I say that this is, this is an improvement to some of the legislation that's been rushed through in an ad hoc way, whereas I say even the big five accounting firms of the past have, uh, have been derisory in their views of it. Sir, clause three is self-evident. I don't think those at home will sort of... I don't think the ratings for the show this afternoon, sir, in terms of parliamentary listening will go through the roof uh, as we progress through the committee stages of this bill. But I will pick up on a couple of things that other colleagues have made. Sir. There's a principle around when you're setting tax rates, when you have a tax system, the tax system has to be simple and transparent. Simple so that people can deal with it, uh, transparent uh, so that uh, it, is, it is easy to understand, you can, you can work within the system, and hopefully, sir, the system can work for you and, and it's accountable. But as other colleagues have said, when the government chose to reduce tax rates, uh, one of the things I think that they forgot was uh, this issue of equity. And there was an opportunity, sir, in terms of equity and fairness, uh, as we debate this bill or as this bill was put together, to examine and look at the whole of the tax pie and look at who's paying what, and as my colleague Ian Lees Galloway said, where the burden, uh, the major burden of tax lies. You pointed out that 13 per cent uh, of our tax take is corporate. Um, some would argue that that is particularly low. The government has made much of cracking down or attempting or at least talking about it or blowing a lot of hot air in respect of cracking down on overseas multinational companies who, in their view, don't pay their fair share of tax. Um, uh, you know, we wait with bated breath to see those proposals. Uh, I would have thought I may have seen them with the previous Minister, Sir Peter Dunn, who I think holds the record, as I've said before, as the longest-serving revenue order. minister back, back in the Commonwealth. We may have seen some of those. Well, it, it's quite germane. I'll tell you why it's germane, sir. It's germane because when you put together uh, in, in Part 1, Clause 3, you're confirming a set of tax rates. And the question is, are those tax rates fair? And it is germane, sir, when the government's purported, as I say, to uh, make much of its so-called attempts to uh, uh, see whether multinational companies should pay their share of tax. Sir. That's not contained in this piece of legislation, nor, sir, in this clause. So those who pay the tax, the middle class, the, those working people, uh, even those at the top and corporates, they do expect some accountability uh, for the tax that they pay. For ordinary working folk, or for every New Zealander, they expect that that tax is utilised, sir, in such a way that they can, for instance, line up at a doctor or line up at a hospital uh, and, uh, and uh, have their injuries or their illnesses dealt with. 
and we have debated day after day and week after week in the life of this parliament, sir, when we see you know, de de uh, uh, a degradation of the health system. And one has to ask, those people will be asking today, sir, Mr Chair, uh, the Honourable Clayton Crosby. those people will be asking today, sir, as we confirm these rates, well, am, am I getting the best bang for my buck if I've been on a waiting list for six or 12 months, uh, where are my tax dollars going? The same argument may be made, sir, in respect of our police force. Uh, in terms of those people who have been impacted on, either through burglary or through assault or other crime, they, sir, may be listening to this debate today, or as their local police may say to them, well, we're under pressure, Order. under pressure of resources. Those people, sir, who listen to this debate about, it is germane, sir, about Clause 3, it has to be germane. If I'm sitting at home today, sir, listening to a debate about Clause 3, where this House is confirming a set of tax rates which within that financial year will raise revenue, and that revenue will de be deployed amongst a variety of portfolios. It is germane, sir, for those listeners sitting at home to ask the simple question, are they getting the best bang for their buck out of these tax rates which we confirm today? I don't quite see how it can be anything but germane to the debate, sir, whether it be in respect of health or ACC or people who are impacted on in respect of law and order. All those portfolios, sir, are funded out of these, ultimately, out of the revenue. And the minister sort of shakes her head. She is Minister of Revenue. She must at least know that Clause 3 sets a rate of tax which will then generate income for the government, and that will be deployed in other portfolios. If she shakes her head, then there's something really wrong. And, and maybe we should sort of, you know, suspend the debate and maybe her officials should go and have a wee chat to her and explain the basis of raising taxes, sir. So um, it would be interesting, and it would have been interesting, as I think other colleagues have said, if the government in proposing Clause 3 had put out there in a transparent way the total tax pie so that we could have a debate and a clear debate as to who pays what, sir. So I say in confirming these rates, it will be interesting if the minister or her officials are prepared to stand up and answer some of the questions that we have put to them in terms of whether they think these tax rates are fair, whether there is a fair distribution across the board, whether they think uh, in, the, in the case of safe corporates on the 13 per cent rate that they believe they're paying their fair share, or even as a, a, well, a germane but a side issue as the debate con uh, continues, sir, uh, what their practical plans may be for eliciting further taxation from multinational companies who they themselves as a government say are not paying their fair share. Well, if they're not paying their fair share, OK, I think we could get a reasonable amount of consensus across the parliament on that. The question for the government as we move through this narrow clause three is what well, are they actually going to do about it? Because presumably the, they could make an alteration to these rates if they were gaining more taxation, a say out of multinational companies which they believe aren't paying their fair share, that may provide some equity, some fairness. So it'll be interesting to see if the Minister will take a call. If she disagrees with my analysis that setting annual rates then allows you to tax people, and that tax is then raised by the government, and that tax is then deployed into portfolios like health and education, welfare, etc., etc., then I'm prepared to take a lesson from her. I know she's extremely exquisite uh, and, and erudite. In, 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 uh, I was talking about her arguments. Uh, in, in providing lectures for people, she has made an art form of it in this place, sir. Uh, the lectures, that is. Some of those lectures have sort of been her downfall, but, other, but hey, she's here now. She's got back on the black leather in the cabinet room, so we should celebrate that fact. But I'll be interested if the minister is prepared to respond. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Fletcher Tabitha. Thanks for the opportunity, 